Hey everybody, it's The Burger Dude, and today I want to show you how I make a Baconator like Wendy's, but vegan and way better. And the key to veganize what is possibly the most non-vegan burger on the market is by making some rice paper bacon. And this recipe is really just my variation on a recipe I saw by Sawstash, who also based his recipe off of Yup It's Vegan. So be sure to check the description as I'll leave a link to their recipes as well. And we're going to start off by making the bacon marinade. So we're going to do some soy sauce, followed by some neutral oil. I used vegetable oil. And of course, we got to add some nutritional yeast, as dictated by vegan law. Next up is some liquid smoke, which is going to impart a smokiness to it. Followed by some maple syrup, which will just make it a little bit sweet, but you probably won't even really notice. And then some smoked paprika, which is obviously going to impart some smokiness as well. And some chili garlic sauce, that's what it looks like. You could also use some sriracha. Next up is some garlic powder. And then I'm also going to use this umami seasoning, but you could also use some of this accent seasoning, which is technically MSG. So if you don't want to use MSG, go ahead and skip it. But I do like the way that the accent tastes. It kind of makes it taste exactly like fast food bacon. So I gave it a taste with a clean finger and decided, you know what? I'm going to throw some accent in there just because. And I gave it a whisk and then we're all ready to rock. I'm going to give it a taste and I'm going to decide it tastes great. You could also use these kinds of products if you have access to them. They will obviously make your job a little bit easier with imparting a bacony flavor. And here is the star of the show, the rice paper. And you can find this at most Asian markets. Uh, I actually can find it at my local Ralph's, but you could also find it at places like Whole Foods, Sprouts, that sort of thing. It's pretty inexpensive as well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get either a deep dish. I'm using a skillet here because it's all I had, but fill it up with a little bit of water and then take two of the sheets of rice paper and just kind of gently coat them in the water like that. They can be kind of brittle and easy to, to break or crack, so just be real gentle with them. And the water is gonna seal them together. You wanna go ahead and try and press out any air bubbles that you can find. And then typically, in the past when I've made this, you'd start off with a cutting board like this and then you would lay down your rice paper and try and get all the air bubbles out by doing that. And then you would go ahead and slice it up. I'm using a pizza cutter, which I find to be the easiest way to do this. And you can cut it lengthwise and then cut it in half like that to make them shorter. And the problem with this that I found was that it gets very sticky. It's almost like the glue on the back of, like when you get a magazine subscription and your address, the sticker and the glue that they use to get the sticker on there, it's kind of like that. And then after that, you have to you know take them and dip them in the marinade and it's a, it's a little time consuming and I gotta be honest, I'm pretty clumsy. So it was kind of difficult for me the first few times I did it. So I thought instead of doing it this way, what if we took our marinade, just put it in another skillet and before we slice up our rice paper, we'll just go ahead and coat it in the marinade like that. And the reason I like to do this is now that the marinade is on there, it's not sticky. It's a, a lot easier to work with. And so once you feel like you've gotten a good coating of marinade on your rice paper, we're going to take that same cutting board and then we're also going to get a wire rack. Now just imagine that all those slices of bacon aren't there yet. This is obviously later when I kind of perfected this whole little thing. So just pretend that for the sake of argument that there's no bacon on that wire rack. And then go ahead and just kind of smooth down the edges because we're going to take our pizza cutter. And for those keeping track, yes, this is the second pizza cutter I have in this video. The first one I broke in between these two shoots. So go ahead and slice up your slices of bacon, however thick you like. You could either leave them long like that or you could slice them in half again. And then when you're done slicing them up, go ahead and let them rest on a wire rack like this. Or you can also save them for later and just put them in some Tupperware. And then that way, if you don't wanna fry all of your bacon up at the same time, you can just keep it for later. And then if you wanna have a couple pieces for breakfast or for a sandwich or whatever, you can just pull a couple out of the Tupperware and fry it up real quick. And these do fry up very quickly. So it's not a big deal to have some laying around. And they'll keep in the fridge for a few days, at least in my experience, they don't go bad too quickly. But once you got all your bacon cut up and you're ready to fry them, let's get a skillet with a little bit of oil in there. And I highly suggest just cooking one piece of bacon as a test at first and just kind of getting a feel for it. They will cook quite differently depending on how long you cook them for. The longer you cook them, the crispier they'll get. And in addition to that, they will crisp up quite a bit after you cook them and you let them rest. So really, I would recommend just doing one as a test just to kind of figure out what kind of texture you like, how long to cook it and that sort of thing. 
And you also don't need to necessarily use as much oil as I have here. The next day I cooked them in basically not too much oil at all. I kind of just sprayed it with some cooking spray and they cooked up just great. They did get a little bit crispier quicker though. And once you got them all cooked up, I like to let them rest on a wire rack. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the variation in texture here. These ones on the right, I cooked a little bit longer. So as you can see, they are a little bit crispy. And the ones on the left, I cooked for not as long and they're a little bit chewier. Slightly crispy, slightly chewy. That is the texture and consistency that I go for. And I just suggest experimenting and figuring out what you like. So now that our bacon is done, it's time to get our burger together. So I have eight ounces of plant-based meat that I'm gonna divide into two four ounce patties. And I highly recommend getting a scale for this sort of thing. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier rather than just eyeballing it. And once you have your plant-based meat divided into two burger balls, we're gonna take some wax or some parchment paper and we're just gonna try and press them down into a nice uniform shape. And then what the wax paper is gonna help you do is also shape it into the iconic square patty as well. And the wax paper is just gonna make it so that, you know, your hands aren't gonna be super sticky with the meat. And there you go, I got it shaped into the iconic square on the first try, not trying to brag, but I am. Also, you might wanna take a bun and just make sure for the sake of bun to burger ratio that you've got a good size burger patty. Now, if you have access to a square mold like this, I got this at a cooking supply store or a chef supply store. You can go ahead and just press it down and make sure that you've got a perfect, perfect square. And this is something I do because I'm slightly neurotic when it comes to these sorts of things. And once you got your two burger patties all nice and pressed, we're gonna get our buns and put them in a dry skillet over medium heat and then add a little bit of butter. And what I like to do is take some of that melted butter and just brush it on the buns. And this is gonna impart some flavor, obviously, but it also, you know, it's mostly for the photograph. You could do it too, just for fun. I mean, if you're gonna take a picture of your burger, definitely do it, but it imparts a little bit of flavor and it just makes the bun look a little bit more fresh, I guess, I don't know. It's shiny, people like shiny stuff. So then we're gonna go ahead and cook our burger patties as we do. And I apologize for the lack of browning, but the hot plate I'm using is not as optimum as I would like. But that's okay, once you flip your burgers, go ahead and add the cheese and a little bit of water to steam it and cover. And then I went ahead and just cooked it on my stove top to get some real heat. And there you go, cheese is melted. And now it's just time to assemble the burger. So we're gonna do some mayo and then build it up. I think that was inspired by my recent viewing of Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. And now it's time to give it a bite. Here you go. Look at that, look at that beautiful rice paper bacon, two big old square patties. And this was one of the best burgers I've had. I know I say this on every video. I guess they just keep getting better. So if you want to be like me and make one of the best burgers of your life, I highly suggest this rice paper bacon on this Wendy's Baconator, but vegan. <laughs>